on hail subscribers i'm here to talk to you how to do your very first hair trick Everyone wants to do something cool. Everyone wants to learn air tricks. I'm gonna talk about learning air awareness, golden revert off the water, focusing on your edge, focusing on your line tension, air roll, air roll to blind, and back mode. Air roll to revert. There's two different things, like your very first air trick, people think, Air railies are the way to go. People think air rolls are the way to go. Air railies, I think, are a little bit more dangerous because you're going out and catching a front edge. But if you're like me, that's been doing air rolls for years and never did a air railie, it's really hard to learn an air railie because you automatically flip. But the thing is with an air rolled revert, you're always landing on your back. So it's I think it's a lot easier to learn. <laughs> Let's talk about what you need to learn first. Obviously, you need to learn the basics. Get around the cable, maybe do some 180s, some 360s, but I think it's really beneficial to learn a rolled revert off the ramp first because it teaches you the rotation, the 180, and then the flip rotation. It also teaches you air awareness, which is the biggest thing when you want to learn your first air trick. If you just go like air trick right off the bat, you're going to focus too much on the flick and then once you get in the air, you don't know what to do. So if you already know the rotation in the air off the kicker and you can focus on your flick and you don't have to worry about your rotation in the air because you already know the rotation. Let's talk about what we do off the ramp first. You don't really need a hard edge into your ramp. This trick, all you really need is a moderate edge and a big jump. You start by edging into your kicker, flatten off right before, get to the top of the ramp, jump nice and high. It's very important we get to the very top of that ramp. And that's key. If you do it anywhere like halfway up or at the bottom, you're not gonna get enough height. But we wanna keep that rope close to you, pull that rope all the way into that back hip, try and put it right behind your back pocket, like right here. Pull my elbow up. Once you get both hands to that back hip, then you can let go, pull your knees into your chest, looking up and grab the board. Trying to look for that water. Now, the water is gonna come from up here in your point of view. So I'm looking for that water. The moment I see that water, I'm gonna let go of my board and follow that water all the way down to my landing. You gotta land on your toes. The 180 gives you the flip, the momentum from your back hip and your back knee. And pulling the handle with both hands gives you some more of that 180 rotation in turn giving you more flip if you're under flipping it. A lot of people do these tricks really laid out their first couple ones. Laid out meaning I'm not bending my knees and you're really sprawled out. So you, they hit the kicker, they jump, and they just do the flip like this. When you are super sprawled out, that'll also make it hard for you to keep the rope in, but it also slows down your flip. The shoulders initiate rotation and flip. Knees judge the speed of your rotation. Just like you're sitting in an office chair and you spin, and when you pull your arms in, you speed up. You let it out, you slow down. Your knees are the same thing when you're going upside down on a wakeboard. So when I go in, I'm gonna do this 180, which brings my shoulders like this. That initiates my rotation. Keeping the rope in close, don't reach for the board because then you'll be doing a front flip at that point. We wanna go back and bring the board to you. Really grab that board. As long as you're trying to grab it, it will speed up your flip, as long as you're going for it. And when you're going for it, you bend your knees even a little bit and that'll help you speed up your rotation. So if you're doing them and you're falling on your face, you're probably really sprawled out and not getting enough flip. I see that all the time. My thing is really going for that board in your grab. You don't have to grab it. It's not necessary to grab it but it helps a lot. It makes your trick look more controlled when you grab your board because you initiate, you can really judge your speed. If I underflip it, I can hold the grab more and really pull in on it and speed up my flip if you're getting stuck. If I over rotate with my shoulders, I can stay laid out and land it right. So that's also another really important thing in learning air awareness. If you only do the 180 with one hand, that handle gets really far away from you. 
and now you're doing it really laid out and you're either falling your back like this or you're gonna come all the way around and fall on your face. So you can also get pulled to your nose and catch a nose pick. So it's very important to have good connection, keeping the rope close to your hips at all times. If you land on your heels coming into the cable, you're gonna slip out. So we gotta land on your toes, going away from the cable to keep that line tension. So if I land on my toes, I keep that line tight. If I land on my heels, all that rope gets really loose and you're gonna lean back or sit down and slip out. So we always gotta land, whatever you do off the kicker, we gotta land going away from the cable. So definitely learn the air to revert off the kicker first. So you can feel how that rotation is going to feel like when you're going upside down, spinning in that direction. Now air tricks are a little different in that aspect. You don't need to pull your knees in to speed up your flip. The, the speed of your rotation comes from the flick off the walk. Your left foot forward, might be easier to do it left foot forward, but if you're in a cable that turns counterclockwise, it'll be a lot harder because you're having to edge towards the inside of the cable. When you're ever, you're doing an air trick towards the inside, it's always a little bit harder because you're not getting that momentum from the corner of the cable and you're not speeding up, gaining line tension. Air tricks are about line tension. If you are right foot forward on a counterclockwise cable, you're gonna get a lot higher than someone who is left foot forward on a counterclockwise cable. So when you do a roll to revert off the water, for me, I do them switch because we are at a counterclockwise cable and I get a lot higher on that. So first thing you wanna do on an air trick is your edge. Your edge is your most important thing. It's all about line tension. In your edge, you're gaining line tension. You're pulling that cable down towards the water. So once you flick your feet, it jolts you in the air, like a slingshot or a rubber band. You pull back on that rubber band in your edge. When you flick your feet, you let it go and it flings you up in the air. So how to gain line tension. Keep the handle low by your front hip. I know this sounds weird. Everyone thinks a powerful edge is like this. Everyone thinks powerful edge comes from like their muscles, right? You have to work hard into it. In an air trick, you don't want to do that. Even anything you do, edging in like this into anything is going to wear you out. So all that push from the water, you got push from the water and pull from the rope. When you have push from the water going th through all your muscles, your muscles have give. It's going to wear you out. You feel the burn in that edge. You stand tall, stay connected with your hips close, and you edge like this, then you're not gonna feel it in your muscles because all that push is going through your bones. Your bones don't have that give. So that's where power comes from your edge, especially in air trip. So when you first start your edge, handle low by your hip and you just tip. Once you start tipping over, that board is gonna come out in front of you. Nice and slow. You're gonna dip into your edge slowly. You're not gonna go like really hard into your edge. You're gonna slowly Go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then slowly increase your edge. Once that board, you start tipping, once that board gets all the way in front of you, that is your time to flick. Once you get here, you're at a point of no return. You gotta flick it. So that board comes in front of you, and you go off your back foot. If I'm right foot forward, doing it right foot forward, I'm gonna look over my right shoulder. If you're doing it left foot forward, you're gonna look over your left shoulder. So you get that board all in front of you. I'm going to look over my right shoulder. I'm going to push down on my back foot. Give it a little bit of more spring when you push with your back foot. So you look, push with that back foot. Your front foot goes up here, way above your head. You're going from your edge up into the air. Now once you're in the air, that handle comes here. Still by your back pocket, just like the ramp. It'll help if you keep your elbows in when you flick, and then once you do the 180, you spot your landing, you'll let go, watch the water, land on those toes. So it'll, it'll help with your flick to keep those elbows in, to keep that rope close. Like you don't necessarily have to pull it off the ramp, you gotta pull it in. From the water, it's all about just keeping it close to you, because the flick naturally gives you that 180 spin. So that flick naturally brings you into that 180. You can keep the ropes close, do your flip, let go when you spot your landing, and land on your toes with one hand. Now what you don't want to do. 
when you're in your edge. It's very important you stay stacked up. So another thing to give proper height, it's how deep your board goes into the water. So you're gonna start your edge and you just tip over so that board comes out in front of you. Now your board's gonna be at a little bit of an angle. Your back leg's just slightly bent, your front foot is out. So you're gonna, your board is gonna be about this angle in the water. To flick, if you wanna get, like to flick, you're gonna flick it this way and your back foot is gonna come up or up over your head like that. But to give a little bit of extra height once you get used to it, then you're gonna pull your front foot down into the water. Your back foot doesn't come up because that'll bring the water level up. When you're edging like this, the water level going like this across your board. That water level is about here. When you pull your front foot down when you flick, now that water level comes up here. The higher you get the water level up under your board, the more line tension you're gonna have on the rope. You're having more push under your feet, which in turn gives you more pull from the rope. So we don't wanna bring your back foot up, we wanna bring your front foot down into the water and then flick from your edge. We talked about how to flick, how to get into your edge, but where? Where is key? If you do your air trick in the middle of a straightaway, that cable's got a lot of give. It's gonna bounce a lot. So it's gonna be really hard to control that cable shape. So you wanna go around a corner. Now, you don't flick from the corner. You don't flick from the wheel. It might look like that, but we're not flicking from that change of direction. We're doing it close to a corner. The closer you are to a corner, the better line tension you'll have. We want to go around the corner, get back under the cable, and then go for it. So if you noticed over here, I went around these two buoys, I edge out on my heels, go around both buoys, I come back in, and then I'm under the cable, and then I immediately start my edge. You don't have to drop into that edge that quickly, you can take your time, but the closer you are to a corner, the better, because that's where the, the cable is going to be at its highest. The middle in between two corners, the, the cable's going to sag. So if you do it closer to a corner, you have better line tension. So edge around both buoys, get really far out, and that just gets you under the cable faster, so you're able to cut for your flick sooner. You're able to get into your edge sooner after the corner. If you bend at the waist too much, like this, and you flick like this, when you're bent at the waist, all that pull from the rope is now bringing you straight down and your face is going in the water at that point. Now with the Arrowed Revert, you'll be going like this. So you'll probably be digging the shoulder in the water or you're gonna be laying, laying on your back. You're always gonna like fall like right here on the back of your neck when you're learning that. So if you're bent at the waist too much, you're gonna go straight down. Also with your knees. Your knees, if you're bent in the knees too much, you're giving in to that line tension. Line tension is key. So if you bend at the knees or break at the waist, you're getting line tension back to the rope and you're not gonna get that spring. So it's very important we keep that front leg straight. Back one can, can be a little bit bent, but just slightly. You don't wanna be like this, ever so slightly. So when we tip, we're standing up nice and tall, keeping your chest up, your body straight. You're gonna be bent at the hips a little bit, but not like that. You're just gonna be bent a little bit. So when you flick with your body straight, with your, with your legs straight, your chest straight, you're not bent at the hips, and you flick like this, then you're going up. Your shoulders are going up at that point. That's, that's what pulls you up into the air, and that's how you get proper amount of height. Now, to start off, you're not gonna be edging in that hard, and like you'll get very, you might do them, but very, very low. To get them higher, the only thing is really, like you still gotta keep your chest up, you're not bent at the waist, you're locked in your knees pretty much, and when you edge, the farther your back goes to the water, the harsher your angle of your back to the water, the higher you're gonna go, the more line tension you're putting into the rope. So if you wanna go higher, you dig in, you really drop, load the line, dropping those shoulders back. Another thing you can do is pull your board down into the water. Now flicking from your edge is also important because I see a lot of people back off their edge. So if you back off your edge, you edge, and a lot of people go, flat and they ollie and they try and do the flip. That defeats the purpose. You're giving all that line tension back to the rope. We gotta flick from your edge. Dig that board in the water and flick like your board, your feet, 
go up this way from this point of view, from this angle. Your board goes up in the air. I see a lot of people will try to flick and they come up. If you come up over your board before you flick, you're not going anywhere. Either you're gonna front edge right there or what most people do, they, they do like a rear little ollie and they fall on their back or they'll just do, they'll land like this and catch that back edge. So it's very important you flick from your edge, very gently, very slowly, get in, just tip over, get in your edge, wait for that board to come up in front of you, look up over your right shoulder, push that back foot down, that handle, so your elbows stay in, and the board comes over your head, spot your landing, land on your toes. Hopefully you can take something from this. Hopefully you take this, my advice, to our, your home cable park. Everybody's different. Everybody learns the, at their own pace. Once I started learning, it took me months to land my first one. So don't get discouraged if it takes you a while. It takes a lot of repetition, going it over and over and over. Get back on that horse. We did our tutorial here at OWC, and learning air tricks, they're a whole lot of fun. Might be intimidating at first, but if you stick with it, keep on trying it, I promise you, you'll love wakeboarding so much more if you stick with it. I know it's scary, but if you do the steps, do 180s, 360s, then roll the reaver, and then off the kicker, and then go from there, it reduces your risk of injury because you already learned air awareness. I love air tricks, they're so much fun, and you know, you go by the dock, you throw an air trick, whoa! See everybody on the dock just go, whoa, what was that? That looks so cool. I enjoy what I do. So stick with it, keep on doing it, enjoy your ride, and I'll see you next time.